Not another video telling you how... Oh wait, there's a helicopter. Okay, it's gone. Not another video telling you how good it is. Surely not. Kind of. But the good and the bad. I'm in a dull, wet, cold London and we're going to have a stroll and put it to the test so you can see what's what. So when it comes to a camera, the obvious thing to look for, first of all, is the image quality. And I think it goes without saying that the Pocket 3 definitely ticks that box. But something that's just as important as image quality is sound quality. So I'm standing in front of the most famous clock in London. I've got the face track on so I'm trying to get the clock in the frame with me out of the frame but it's not really working but you can see it there in the background. The famous, most famous clock in London. Look at the skies behind me as well, it's blue there. Whereas over there, completely different story. But yeah, I'm standing here in front of Big Ben uh, looking over the sea and, oh not the sea sorry, the River Thames, it's, it's the river, it's not the sea. The river, 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 river. Uh, and yeah, I thought let's test out um, the microphone inside the Pocket 3 and the external mic that comes with the Creator Combo, the Mic 2. And I'm not just going to stand here and chat rubbish, don't worry. Um, I've memorised some facts about Big Ben, so this should be interesting to see uh, whether I can remember them or not. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch between the internal mic system and the mic too, so you can see the difference between both setups. And just as I've pressed record and ready to go, it's started to rain. I think we're going to have this problem quite a bit today. Um, so yeah, the Pocket 3 isn't waterproof uh, and I'm not really willing to risk seeing how it holds up in the rain, especially this early on when it's so new and fresh. So I'm going to find shelter and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I found a little bit of shelter in the form of these trees. It's not like crazy chucking it down, but still, yeah, it's it's wet. Like, and the camera is a bit wet at the moment. Uh, and it's the it's the best I could get. We're still getting Big Ben somewhat in the background over there. So so far today, everything I've been recording has been with the mic two connected. I've now turned the mic two off, and it's coming live direct from the Pocket 3 microphone system. It's still fairly windy. There's a lot of building works going on over there. We're not as close to the river as I planned us to be, uh, not the sea, but uh, yeah, it's still, it's still uh, like a real life environment. So anyway, so we're gonna do this with the internal mics first, and there's two different options with this. We can have wind reduction off and wind reduction on. So at the moment, wind reduction is turned off. Uh, and this is how it sounds. So my first fact about Big Ben is that... Ah, oh, you know what? I, I, it's gonna, we're gonna be here all day. I'm just gonna get my phone up. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of words. I, 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 yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. Okay, so every clock face is made up of 324 pieces of glass. With four clock faces on the tower, that's a staggering 1,292 individual pieces of glass in total. Okay, so I've now switched it to wind reduction on and it's still coming from the internal mic on the Pocket 3. Uh, but to switch wind reduction on, I've had to switch the whole camera into pro mode uh, because it was in auto before and you can't change that in auto mode. So it's now in pro mode if you're thinking the picture looks slightly different. So the next fact of the day is it is 96 meters tall, which is 315 feet or equivalent to 21 London buses. Right, we're now back in auto mode and I've switched the Mic 2 back on. And with the Mic 2, you get 32-bit float recording. You can record internally. So really speaking, you could use this with another camera and just record straight into the microphone and then sync it up in post. Uh, you don't need a receiver to plug into the Pocket 3 uh, because it just connects automatically without having to plug anything external into it. 
And the Mic 1 does work with the Pocket 3, although you will have to plug the receiver into the Pocket 3 with the little connector that it comes with for it to work. It won't sync up with it like the Mic 2 does without anything plugged in. So on with the facts. This is with wind reduction turned off on the Mic 2. The Palace of Westminster was destroyed in a catastrophic fire in 1834 and Parliament decided that they would build a new clock tower as part of the new works. They started building the tower in 1843 and finished in 1859, making it 164 years old to this day. Okay, so we're now in pro mode uh, because again, to adjust the noise reduction setting, you have to be in pro mode. So I've now turned noise reduction on and this is how it's sounding. And our next fact of the day is the bells don't swing. You may think that the bells swing. Oh my God, there's a bee. <laughs> you must be able to see the bee. Can you hear the bee? Look, there's a bee. It comes right in my ear. <laughs> anyway, take two. The bells don't swing. You may think that the bells inside the tower swing to make the sound, but actually they're fixed in place and struck from the outside by hammers. And that was our facts for the day, coming straight from London, coming straight from the Pocket Free. Tune in next week for more fun facts. Not. So I've had to take some shelter yet again underneath another tree because yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the weather's just a little bit mad. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is, that's London for you. But yeah, apart from the obvious, amazing picture quality that this new one inch sensor gives out. Like it literally is mind blowing. I'm just looking at it now and I'm still like, yo, and that's even on this little screen. If I swing the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at, like the sky to my eye is just white, but like on the camera, it does a really good job at picking up like the detailing of the clouds and stuff. Like the sky is this camera. Yeah, it's just like the dynamic range is madness. Look at that. Even in not the best lighting, let's be honest. So yeah, you've got the normal shooting modes, video, obviously, photo, let's not forget about photo. A lot of people forget about photo mode in a camera like this, but this camera does actually produce some really decent photos. You've got slow motion, so you can do 4K up to 120 now, which is obviously fantastic. Uh, you've got hyperlapse and time lapse, and you've got a new addition, low light mode. And like most DJI products, you've got the option to tap into the finer, deeper settings in pro mode, where you can adjust the shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance, etc. I can't do that. You're joking. What I was saying is I can't do that right now because I don't have any NDs for the Pocket 3 and the NDs uh, for the Pocket 2 don't actually work. Uh, they're just too small. So until I get some NDs for the Pocket 3, we won't be able to do uh, too much with the shutter speed, etc. But you can go into pro mode and set everything to auto if you want. And uh, in fact, let's do that now. So I'm now in pro mode with normal as the color profile. Uh, and yeah, like I said, if I was to adjust the shutter speed to the normal 180 degree rule, etc., I think everything would just look way too over. In fact, it would look way too overexposed. So yeah, we can't do that until we've got some NDs. But whilst we're in pro mode, you have three different color profiles to choose from. You've got normal Normal, which we're in now. You've got HLG in 10 bit, which we'll switch to now. So this is now a HLG 10 bit. If I swing the camera around, it looks like some sun is coming out as well. Don't know if you can pick that up on the camera just in the distance. And I love the D log M on the Action 4. So yeah, this is this is great that we've now got this on the Pocket 3. Again, if I switch it around, you can see what's going on how it's looking. You can adjust the sharpness and noise, which interestingly, when I unboxed it the first day, the next day I got a firmware update message and that was included in that. So as it was fresh out the box, you didn't have the image adjustment setting option where you can adjust the noise uh, and the sharpness yourself. It was only after that firmware update came the next day where you're now able to do that in the settings menu. So you do have a two times digital zoom. It is a digital zoom, so you're probably going to lose some quality when using it. But it's there if you want to. So if I turn the camera around, 
and do a two time zoom in. How's that looking? That's the furthest we can go. This is the London Eye, if you didn't know. I can't really see into the pod. Didn't expect us to be able to get that close, but yeah, this is the two times digital zoom. I'm standing in the sun because firstly, I'm cold. Secondly, let's make the most of it whilst we can. And thirdly, this looks pretty good. It does a really good job when the sun is either behind you or on your face with balancing everything out, but yeah. So with the creator combo, you get this, the wide angle lens. So this is without it on, and this is with it on. With, without. We're now gonna walk with the sun behind me so you can see what I mean with how well it actually balances everything out. The sun is really, really strong behind me. Look, if I stand like this, you can see it on my face, how much, can you? Oh, the tree's in the way. I mean, yeah, you get the gist. It's very bright behind me, but from what I'm looking at on the preview screen, it actually is balancing it out really, really well, which is one thing I have noticed. Uh, when using it, especially with the white skies that you get here. I mean, we very rarely see blue skies. In fact, there's some blue skies over there. Just, f well, it's not really blue, actually. It's trying to push through, but it's not really coming through. It's more bluer over there, though. Look at that. Who would have thought it was raining 10 minutes ago? By the way, all of these talking headshots that I'm doing are in auto mode um, because I actually personally think it does a fantastic job in auto mode. Uh, yes, pro mode I would be my go-to, but like I said, I haven't got any NDs yet. So what's the point in putting it in pro mode and then tapping those pro settings in auto when I can just keep the whole thing in auto mode? But yeah, just so you know, all of these shots right now, and unless I state otherwise, like we were doing earlier with the testing, is in auto mode. So you get this amazing, it's very small, but it's still amazing that this camera can now create this kind of background blur, uh, or what some people would like to call the bokeh, or bokeh, 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 bokeh. I'm not gonna call it bokeh, because I personally hate the word, so I'm gonna call it background blur. But yeah, the depth of field coming from this camera, simply spectacular. Like, if you didn't know it was the Pocket 3, you could get away with it not being the Pocket 3, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not massive, the background blur, but it's there enough to kind of do that separation and give you that depth of field, which is so, so good with a camera this small. You've got the normal gimbal modes, FPV, follow, tilt lock, so it's in follow at the moment, but you've got this new addition, yeah? Spin shot, the spin shot. Okay, you know what? Let's just put some dramatic music on and I'm gonna walk towards this phone box over here and you can see what's going on. The fact that you can do that with this camera, like it's just like it's so easy as well, like literally so easy. Just go spin mode, point the camera, press record, press the button and walk. Like there's just nothing else to it. You've got the option to turn on glamour effects. Uh, so, you know, let's say uh, you've had a heavy weekend, you know, party on a Saturday. vlog on a Monday and yeah you're looking a little bit rough you can connect the uh, pocket free to the DJI Mimo app on your phone and enable glamour effects so let's have a little play around and see what that looks like so here we are 
Okay, we are recording right now and I'm on the Mimo app now and actually you can't turn them on and adjust them whilst you're recording. So that's something I've just realized now. So I'm gonna have to stop recording. And next time you see me, I'll be looking a lot prettier than this. So here we are. Does it look any better? Let me put my phone down in a minute and let me take my glasses off because I did some eyes adjustment. I, see, the thing is I can't see the preview on the Pocket 3. I can only see it on... <laughs> I think we need to put the glasses back on. I'm not sure that's really made any difference. So yeah, it's there if you want it. Um, and you've had a heavy, heavy weekend. Glamour effects. So let's talk focusing. And when they announced the Pocket 3, they you know, made a big scene about fast pixel focusing. And I thought, well, it's just another thing that they're saying just to say it, you know? But nah. The focusing is amazing. So you've got the normal options, single, continuous, which is what it's been on throughout this whole video so far. And then you've got the option to showcase your products where it will focus on the product you're showing rather than your face. So if I get my phone out and put that to the screen, look at that. That is amazing. Like it's literally, it's so fast, so fast. So you get to show off your products, like your phone, or this. Now, you're probably thinking, why have I bought my wash bag to central London? Well, it's not a wash bag, although it does look like a wash bag. It is the carrying case that comes with the creator combo inside the box. So I know the question in your mind because I was back and forward with it as well. Do you get the creator combo or do you get the standard combo? Uh, I had the standard combo in my basket and I removed it and I added the creator combo and then I removed that and then I added the creator combo. And I came to the conclusion that I'm just going to spend the extra 130 pound on the creator combo. And there was two reasons why I did that. And that was for the battery handle and for the mic too. The Mic 2 obviously gives out better audio than the actual internal microphones. The internal microphones are still so sick and sound great, but when you're out and about and there's a lot of noise pollution going on, uh, yeah, the Mic 2 definitely like outweighs the internal system. Uh, and then the battery handle, you can't put a price on having extra battery or enough battery. And you don't want to run out of battery when you're shooting, like that is the worst, we've all been there. And you could bring a power bank with you and you could connect that up, but then you've got wires hanging off. Whereas with the handle, you can just connect that on. So if you can push the boat out, I would spend the extra money and get the creator combo. And don't forget, you get that amazing looking wash bag as well. Sorry, carry case with it as well. Um, you can't currently buy the Mic 2 separately at time of recording. I'm sure later on you will be able to buy it separately. You can buy the battery handle separately, which is £59 on its own. So it's £130 difference between the standard and creator combo, or you could get the standard and get the battery handle for £59. But when the Mic 2 comes out, I can't imagine it being cheaper than the difference it would be between 59 and 130. So it just makes sense to push the boat out slightly and get amazing audio and guarantee that you're not gonna run out of battery. Active Track 6.0, let's see what you're made of. Okay, so let's go over here. Doing a good job, doing a good job, doing a good job. Let me run back over here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Doing a good job. Let me try and go behind this tree. Right, tracking lost, tracking lost. Is it gonna get me? 
Oh, it didn't get me. It didn't get me. We beat it. We beat the active track. We beat the active track. James one, active track, nil. Okay, round two. So let's just go for a walk over here. Nice little walk. Let's go behind these stairs. Okay, it's wondering what's happening. Okay, let me walk back out. Okay, it's got me. It's got me. It's got me. Right, let me do a bit. Let me get a bit of running on. I don't usually run. Right, let's go behind this pole. Oh, it's lost me. Oh, it's trying to find me. It's lost it. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Hmm. Yeah. Subject lost. James one. Sorry, James two. Pocket three. Nil. Okay, round three. So it's got me, it's got my face. And that's what it's looking at, my face. So what if I covered my face? So it just so happens that I have this inside my bag. So if I put my phone down over here and I take my glasses off, and I put my mask on, let's see how well it can keep up with me. Okay, so it's got me, it's got me. This is so weird. It's got me. It's doing a pretty good job. People were looking. What is this crazy guy doing with a mask on? Okay, it lost me. It lost me. Okay, James free. Pocket free. Nil. Now, you know what? That maybe was a little bit of an extreme test. Um, the active track is sick, like it is so good. Like through this whole video with these headshots, I've had the face detection thingy on and it keeps your face in the center of the frame and it is doing a pretty good job. Um, so, you know, I have to, it's, it's the 100% is better than the Pocket 2's active track, which I think was active track 3.0. So to put it like this, we're on 6.0 now, yeah? And there's 100% a, two times plus difference in the active track than there was on the pocket too. So yeah, that was, that was pretty extreme, but yeah, it was fun to do. I still won though, so yeah. So I know what you're wondering, what don't I like? This, this camera can't be that perfect. It can't be the best thing ever in the world. Well, I tell you what, it is an amazing camera and I love it so much so far. I've only had it like just under a week and I love it already. Um, and yeah, there are some things that I, it's not that I don't, okay, there's some things that I don't like, there's some things that are just slightly annoying, um, but yeah, first of all, am I right in saying, now you let me know down below in the comments, I just think the skin tones look a little bit washed out. Okay, now yeah, the sky is behind me there, but even if I move around to like a bit more of, I don't know, is it me? Am I being a bit too, yeah, I don't know. I just personally think the skin tones look a bit too washed out. When I took some test shots when I first got it the other day, I just I was I was just a bit like, hold on a minute, just look a little bit washed out with the old skin. Uh, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. That w might just be me being a bit dramatic, but that's kind of what I picked up first of all. There's no water or dust rating. I'm not expecting this to be like waterproof, like take it in the sea or take it in the swimming pool. Because of the gimbal head, I just don't think that would be possible. Maybe in the future they might come up with a design that will allow that to happen in some kind of case or whatever, but I don't expect to take this in the pool. What I would like is a small rating that means if it started to rain, like obviously it has done today, or you were even in snow settings, you don't have to rush to take cover because you're thinking, well, actually, if one drop gets in, you know, inside the gimbal, inside the screen or whatever, then you're screwed. So uh, a small water and dust rating would be good. There is no removable battery. I know you've got the battery handle, but I was hoping for a removable battery system. 
uh, and that is not here. So it's definitely one thing that I'm a bit disappointed with. It doesn't stand up very well on its own. So I know with the Creator Combo, you get the little tripod legs, which is great. But if you want to put it down without the battery handle on or the tripod legs or whatever, just on the side, just for a minute, it's going to fall over. And it has done twice. Like I've literally put it on a flat surface and just the slightest bit of movement that jogs it makes it fall over because the, the edges are round, so it's not like a complete flat base. So it would have been nice if it was a little bit more sturdier when you put it down on a table. Overheating, that must be a big question on everyone's lips. And so far I've experienced two times where it overheats, when it's charging and when you're shooting in 4K, 60 and it gets to about 15 minutes. So I haven't shot in uh, 4K 120 for that long of a time. So I can't comment on that right now. I'm assuming it might be the same, but 4K 60 so far, when it gets to about 15 minutes, it starts to get pretty hot. When you're holding the pocket free in a certain way, which for me would be the go-to way to hold it, uh, my finger seems to block one of the microphones at the back, which means I keep getting a microphone blocked message. Now, this is if I'm not shooting with the mic too connected. If I'm shooting using the internal mic system, when I'm holding it and if my finger goes anywhere near the microphone at the back, which is easily done because that was the first thing that happened when I first turned it on and the first thing I noticed, I kept getting the microphone block message. That's one thing to note, especially if you've got bigger hands and you're not using any of the extension connector things and you're just using the pocket free. It's quite small already, so when you've got bigger hands and your fingers touch the mic at the back, you're gonna keep getting this microphone blocked message. So what is slightly annoying is when the Pocket Free is in its case, not the wash bag, sorry, carry case, the actual hard case that it comes with, which comes in the normal combo and the creator combo. When you take it out of the actual case itself, I have noticed that there are marks on the side of the camera that are left by the indents of what is inside the case. It's not massive marks, but the point is those marks weren't there before I put the camera inside the case. So yeah, there's, there seems like there's a little bit of rubbing going on between the actual camera and the kind of indents inside the case. Now you might be thinking, James, you're just being a bit picky. Like those are not really major things. And to be honest, they're not like, it's not make or break. None of them are like make or break for me, but I thought it was just worth saying that's what I've picked up in the small time that I've had the pocket free. But one thing I did actually forget to mention, which I've just remembered, is the battery indicator. So yeah, the, the, the battery indicator on the screen is so small that when you have more battery than it's actually displaying, you think that you have less battery. Does that make sense? So basically a minute ago, I thought, hold on a minute, why have I only got such a small amount of battery left? In fact, I had 54% because when you click on the battery, when you press on it on the screen, you can see the percentage. But because the icon is so small, obviously the dis it's displaying it in such a way that it looks smaller than it is. What I'm trying to say is it would be great if the percentage of the battery was permanently on the screen or you had the option to turn it on. You know, like in the iPhone back in the day, you didn't see the percentage and then now you have the option to turn it on so it displays the battery percentage permanently if that's what you want in the top of your phone it would be good to turn the percentage on on the top of the screen here so you don't have to tap on it all the time and actually the inaccurate battery icon won't be so inaccurate because you can just see the actual percentage oh and would you look at that look where we've ended up phoebe to the rescue oh yes Time to put the heater on, time to take some shelter because I just got a notification on my phone saying it's about to rain. Perfect timing. Ah, nothing like the warmth of a heated car and shelter from the rain, but it's not raining yet, but it's about to rain. Um, but also I thought all the shots we've done have been outside today. So why not be like an inside environment so you can see and hear how it sounds. Look at me making excuses. You know, I just wanted to be in the car for the heater. <laughs> anyway, um, there's actually two things that are not the obvious things that I have picked up on that I really love with the Pocket 3 versus the Pocket 2. Um, 
And one of them is when you used to turn the Pocket 2 off, the gimbal head would lock, but then after a few seconds, it would unlock and flap around. So if you hadn't put it in the case within that time frame, you would either have to turn the Pocket 2 back on and then turn it off again to, for it to lock and then you put it back in the case, or you have to do some next stuff with your hands to try and get the gimbal in place whilst you put it in the case. It can't only be me that used to have that problem. But anyway, with the Pocket 3, once you turn the whole thing off, the gimbal head locks, so it doesn't move. Even after a few seconds, it locks it in place. So even if you take a minute to put it back in the case, you have no issues putting it back in the case because it locks in place. Is that Ryan? Place? Face? Place. Yeah. Anyway, that was great. The next thing that I really liked was with the Pocket 2, there was a four gigabyte recording limit. So after you recorded for four gigabytes, the clip would split and then you would have to mess around in post putting these clips back together. And there were a number of times where I didn't realize that was the case and I thought, hold on a minute, why is this clip cut off halfway through I'm speaking? Then I realized it had a you know, split limit. And yes, you can put them back together in post, but there were some times where that 0.2 second gap, you could hear it, you could tell that they were separate clips. I've done some tests and with the Pocket 3, you no longer have the four gigabyte split you've got it 17 gigabyte split. So it does split, but now up to 17 gigabytes, which in my test was 45 minutes shooting in 4K. So two great things that aren't the obvious that, yeah, were just great. And it doesn't stop there. I've been doing some more tests, fast charging tests. Now, DJI say that you can fast charge the Pocket 3 from zero to 80% in 16 minutes. Well, yesterday I drained the battery out of the Pocket 3 and let it get to 0%. I then plugged it in and I started the timer. And my results are, it took 23 minutes, well, 23 and a half minutes to get to 80%, which is obviously a little bit more than they are claiming it would take. Not a massive amount more, but just worth noting. And it actually took in total 31 minutes to get to 100%. What else do you have in your wash bag? I hear, sorry, carry bag, I hear you ask. Oh, well, let's open it to find out. Oh, would you look at that? It's the pocket too. This is funny. The screen is so small, it's ridiculous. But the question is, and I, I don't know if we're wasting time here, but, uh, and I'm gonna do a full video with Pocket 3 versus Pocket 2, but um, let's let's get out because it's not raining now and I'm, I'm warmed up. And uh, let's see if you can tell the difference between the Pocket 2 and the Pocket 3 image and sound quality. Well, this is weird. <laughs> so one of these, is the Pocket 2, and one of these is the Pocket 3. I have the settings exactly the same on both of them, so we're shooting in 4K on both. Um, it's both in auto mode. I've actually turned the mic 2 off, so the audio is coming from the Pocket 2 and the Pocket 3, and yeah, can you see which one is which? Can you tell which one is which? This is absolutely madness. It feels like, do you know what it actually feels like? You know when you upgrade an iPhone year after year, it doesn't feel like an upgrade. So from like 14 to 15, it, it's not really like that much of a difference. This feels like iPhone 10 to iPhone 15 or maybe that's a bit of a jump. I've owned 10 to 14, something like that. Like this is that, this is, this is, this is a big jump. So let's spin the cameras round. There we go. Uh, let's take a little look at what we can see over here. This is the Tate Modern, by the way. But yeah, same settings, all in auto, audio coming straight from devices. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious which one's which, so I think we'll put that on the screen now. It is quite, quite something. Now you're probably wondering, 
What else is in my wash bag? Uh, sorry, carry case. Well, wonder no more. What else do we have in this? Oh, look at that. It's the iPhone 15 Pro. I wonder how that looks against the Pocket 3. But wouldn't it be great if we could put this on a similar setup to the Pocket 3, i.e. this on a gimbal? Wow, unfortunately, a gimbal doesn't fit inside the wash bag, sorry, carry case. But I just so happen to have the Osmo Mobile 6 with me. So I've got the iPhone 15 Pro on the Osmo Mobile 6 in one hand and the Pocket 3 in another hand. And yeah, mic two is turned off. So it's audio straight from devices. I mean, this is, this is a much more closer comparison than the Pocket 2, like even looking through the screens on both, like the colors and everything is, is, is really good. Whereas the Pocket 2, yeah, wasn't so much. But yeah, what's it saying? What's it sounding like? I'll put on the screen now what one is what. Maybe I should do a bit of walking so we make use of that gimbal so we can see the stabilization of the shots. But yeah, all settings are the same, all in auto mode, both in 4K, no adjustments being made. And just like that, day has turned to night. And have we saved the best till last? I think so. Look at the quality of this low light mega beast. Um, about a month ago, I did a low light test and settings video with the DJI Action 4, where I crowned it the low light king. But I will be removing that crown with immediate effects because I think we have a new winner. Uh, so right now, everything is in auto mode and I don't have low light setting, I don't have the low light setting on. Um, we're gonna turn it on in a minute, but I'm gonna switch the camera around now because I think you've seen enough of my pretty face. Let's have a look at the world around us. I mean, even the quality from this small screen that I'm looking at, it's, it's quite something. So we're gonna take a walk up to probably the busiest, area in central London, Piccadilly Circus. Um, and yeah, as you can see, the sky is pretty much dark. Yeah, it's pretty dark here. I mean, all the lights are on. Uh, but yeah, how's it looking? Like I said, everything's in auto mode. Uh, low light, um, the low light setting is off at the moment. So we're literally just in auto mode. I'm gonna turn it on in a minute. We're gonna take a little walk up here uh, and see what we can see. Right, we, have nearly made it. So as we bend around this corner, you should see the famous big screens, Piccadilly Circus, here we are. And just as I predicted, very, very busy. But yeah, look at this. Look at the quality coming out. Usually there's someone dancing or singing or doing a magic show over here. Looks like people are gathering. Let's see if we can get the camera in to see what's going on. Okay, so second thoughts, we can't wait there because they keep playing music, which will definitely get me a copyright strike. So uh, a bought plan, a bought plan, but yeah, there's a couple of guys dancing. Um, so yeah, you know what? Let's, let's stand over here, right? Let's center everything, there we go. And this is in auto mode now with low light, with the low light setting off. I'm gonna stay in this exact spot and I'm gonna turn low light on. Right, we're back. Still in auto mode, low light, the low light setting is on. Can you see any difference? I can't see too much difference on the screen. I'm not, oh, you know what? We're gonna to have to move. There's more music over there. Low light on or off, this is still looking amazing. And you know what I really love about the Pocket series as a whole is the gimbal, the fact that there is no digital stabilization. Because in low light situations like this, this is one thing that you, 
get with the phones, uh, even the Action 4, that's one thing I didn't like about it, is that vibration effect, which happens mainly in low light because of the digital stabilization, which when you're walking, that's usually what happens. But yeah, this, you're not getting that with this because you know it's all stabilized by the gimbal. But yeah, I think that takes us to the end of our nighttime low light walk. I am gonna be doing a uh, longer video with uh, low light test and even diving into the pro settings as well. So check that video out if you want a longer look at the low light performance with the Pocket 3. But yeah, I think these images speak for themselves. It is the new low light king, hands down. Uh, and yeah, I think we'll hand over to voiceover James now for the conclusion and to sign us out. So we waited and waited and waited and boy was it worth the wait. The quality of the images coming from the Pocket 3 are literally mind blowing. Pairing that with the amazing sound quality coming from the Mic 2 and still pretty decent quality from the actual mics inside the Pocket 3, it is 110% a worthy upgrade. The larger screen, the easy to use menu system, the low light performance, it's all just sick. I feel like when a new camera comes out too fast like year after year, it starts to not feel like an upgrade, but this definitely does. You essentially have a camera, gimbal, tripod and microphone set up all in one and the fact you can still fit it inside your pocket makes it even better. Or, you know, you could put it inside the wash bag. Oops, sorry, I mean carry case. Anyway, let's hang out in the comments below and you'll see me very soon. Is it gonna be another win from James? Oh, you got it. Let's pretend I'm going down some stairs. Oh, oh, subject lost, subject lost. James for pocket free. Still no.